Innateism. Innateism, also known as nativism, believes that the main driver of language learning is the mind, with only a little help from the environment. The main proponent of innateism is Noam Chomsky. Chomsky wrote a scathing criticism of behaviorism, and pointed out what he considered to be inconsistencies with the real world in the theory of behaviorism as applied to language learning. Noam Chomsky uses the term poverty of the stimulus to refer to the insufficiency of the input from the environment to account for the ability of language learners including children to learn a language. According to Chomsky, a child is exposed to slurred speech, half-sentences, slips of the tongue, and mispronunciations. Yet, the language the child develops, particularly the grammar, is perfect. Here's an example of what Chomsky is talking about. You know that the first two sentences are grammatically correct. John himself went to the market. John went to the market himself. For the third sentence, you know that this is wrong without anyone telling you before that it is wrong. Neither did you hear anyone saying this and getting corrected. You just know. This is an example of the poverty of the stimulus. Innatists believe that errors are the result of learners testing their hypotheses about the rules. Learners try to know if their hypothesis is correct or not. The learner's grammar is internally correct. Errors are just inconsistency with the socially accepted grammar. An example of this hypothesis testing is called overgeneralization. Overgeneralization happens when children or other language learners apply a certain rule, even to cases that are supposed to be exceptions to the rule. Examples actually heard from children and adult second language learners are the following. Sheeps. Tooths. Goat. Bring. This shows that children or other learners are applying grammar rules. According to Chomsky and other innatists, this is evidence that learners acquire rules, instead of imitating speech. Innatists believe that there is a separate faculty or portion of the brain dedicated to language acquisition. The lat is found in the universal grammar. Universal grammar is the unformed grammar in the brain that needs to be molded into specific grammars, such as English grammar. The universal grammar determines how grammar is shaped, through the use of constraints. Rules, not sentences, are acquired. With a finite set of sounds and words, learners produce infinite sentences. Frequently, you have never heard the same sentence being said before but you know its meaning. Here's a summary of what innatists believe. Language is a human-specific faculty. Animals don't have language. Language exists as an independent faculty in the human mind, meaning, although it is part of the learner's total cognitive apparatus, it is separate from the general cognitive mechanisms responsible for intellectual development. Properties of language that are common to all languages or language universals are easier to learn than properties specific to only a few languages, or to just one language. This may explain why the contrastive analysis hypothesis failed. Universal grammar limits the possible options that core grammar rules may take. It is the environment or input that tells the learner which of the options is to be followed for a given language. This is like biological evolution. There are rules that are not obtained from the universal grammar. This is called marketness. The primary determinant of first language acquisition is the child's acquisition device, which is genetically endowed, and provides the child with a set of principles about grammar. The acquisition device atrophies with age. Usually it becomes unavailable during puberty. The process of acquisition consists of hypothesis testing, by which means the grammar of the learner's mother tongue is related to the principles of the universal grammar. In conclusion, language is all in the mind. Thank you for listening.